Well, welcome. As you can see in this video, we're going to be looking at the properties of logarithms. Now, if you remember from way back when we were learning about exponents, we had different properties dealing with exponents. Well, a lot of these properties with exponents are connected and related to those properties of exponentials. Because when you think about it, and as you recall from logarithms, the two are closely related. So remember we have this um, tri triangle of power that we called back in the previous unit that helped us understand how to work with logarithms. So if you recall that the logarithm, we have a base, and then we have the value of the logarithm, and we have what it's equal to. Um, and then remember in exponential form, we have your base, your exponent, and your value. So remember, all logarithms are equal to the exponent. So if you remember that, that will help as we work on some of these other rules that we're going to be learning, learning about. So let's go ahead and let's look at our first rule dealing with the quotient rule, and then we'll look at the other two as well. So with the quotient rule, it looks like this. Now I know that looks complicated, but let's break it down piece by piece. So here we have the log base A of a quantity M divided by N. We could break that up to be the log base A of M minus the log base A of N. Because if you remember when we were dealing with exponents and we were dividing with the same base, remember we subtracted the exponents. Remember logarithms are our exponents, so that's what allows us to do this rule. Now remember this rule also works both directions. So I like to have these arrows here just to remind me that if I have something written in expanded form, log base A of M minus log base A of N, I can combine that as a single logarithm. And that's oftentimes what our um, instructions will ask us to do. They'll say write the following as a single logarithm, which means that you want to put it into something smaller. So you want to make sure that you remember that all of these rules go in both directions. So that's why I like to add the arrows just as a visual reminder. Okay, let's look at a product rule. The product rule says if we have the logarithm of a base, A, and we have the quantity M times N, we could break that logarithm up into two pieces to say log base A of M plus log base B of N. And remember, we could go the other direction as well. And again, this is based on the idea with X, uh, the rule of exponents that if you're multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the exponents. So that is where this one comes from. And now let's look at our last rule, the power rule. Just tells us if we have a number in front of a log, so like we'll use the letter n to represent a number in front of a logarithm, that number is an exponent for our value. So log base a of m, the n would be the exponent for the m. And again, if we have an exponent already being applied to a value, we could, if it makes sense to simplify it, we could put that exponent in front of the logarithm. So again, this rule works in both directions. So to make more sense out of these um, generic rules, let's look at some examples. So in this first example, we have log base five, or I'm sorry, log of five plus log of x. The instructions say to write as an expression containing a single logarithm. So remember, in the previous product rule, it could go the other direction. That's what we have here. We're going to combine these together as a single logarithm. So we're going to take and write this as one logarithm of 5 times x. Again, if we need to see that, it's based on this example, or this product rule here. It's just that we're going in the opposite direction there. So they gave it to us in expanded form. We're rewriting this into a single, single logarithm. Let's look at the other example. Here we have log base 3 minus, or log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of 11. So this would be the quotient rule that we're looking at. Again, we're writing this as a single logarithm. So this is going to look like log base 3 of the quantity x divided by 11. Now the order here is important. You want to take the first term divided by the second term, always. Now let's look at number 3. Now here I don't see anything being added or subtracted, but I do see a 10 in front of that log base 2 of x. So remember that 10 is an exponent for that value. So we would really have log base 2 of x to the 10th power. And that's all we have to do for that one. So why don't you try this last one, number 4. Why don't you try this one on your own? It's similar to one of them that we've already done. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and hit play to see if you've got the correct answer. And let's see how you did. 
So you should recognize that this would be dealing with the quotient rule. So we would have the log with this value of 15 divided by x. Again, the order there is important. Okay, let's look at these other examples. Now these say write as a single logarithm and then simplify. So we're going to take it one step further. So if I have log of 5 plus log of 2, if I was going to write this as a single logarithm, I would use that product rule. So I'd have log of 5 times 2, which I know is 10. But it's a log of 10. So remember, this is a common log, so we're trying to figure out what exponent we would apply to 10 to get exactly 10, and that would be 1. And that's your answer. Or this one, log base 4 of 80 minus log base 4 of 5. So hopefully you recognize that we would use a quotient rule, and we would set this up as log of 4 of the log base 4 of the quantity 8 divided by 80 divided by 5, which gives us log base 4 of 16. So I'm trying to figure out what exponent would I apply to 4 to get 16, and that exponent would be 2. So our answer would be 2 there. For this one, before I can do anything, I want to take that 2 and park it in front of that logarithm because I can use that power rule to do that. And now you might recognize log base 2 of 16 would be 4, because 2 to the 4th power is 16. So we would have 2 times 4 now, which would give us 8. Why don't you see if you can try this next one, combining what we've already talked about. So why don't you give this one a shot, see if you can simplify this one. This one's going to take a few more steps. So pause the video if you're ready to try this one out, and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, well maybe you were only able to do parts of it. Maybe you were able to get the whole answer, but let's see how you did. So for the first step, I see that 2. I want to put that 2 as an exponent for the 5, so I'd have the log of 5 squared plus log of 40. Or you could think of it as a log of 25 plus log of 40. Well, now I recognize I could use the product rule to write this as a single logarithm of log of 25 times 40. And 25 times 40 is 1,000, so we'd have the log of 1,000. Since it's a common log, I'm trying to figure out what exponent would I apply to 10 to get 1,000? Well, that would be 10 cubed, so 3 would be my answer. Okay, so let's look at these last four problems, and then we're going to look at this giant last problem. But for these, we're just going to expand these out. So we don't have to do as much simplifying, so these are a little bit easier. So we're going to do the opposite direction now. So log of 16 divided by 3, if I were going to expand that out, I would write it as a log of 16 minus a log of 3. And you need to have a log in front of both of those values. Okay, do not say it's a log of 16 minus 3 and just say it's log of 13. We've changed the answer if that's the case. So again, if you look at the next problem, we have log base 8 of the quantity m to the fourth divided by h cubed. Now for this one, we do want to start by separating this into two logarithms. So if you do that, we would have log base 8 of m to the fourth minus log ba base 8 of h cubed. Now you always want to look to see if any of those rules that we talked about could still be applied. And hopefully you recognize that both the m and the h have exponents. So those exponents we want to move to be in the front of each of those individual logarithms. So we'd have 4 times the log base 8 of m minus 3 times the log base 8 of h. And that can't be expanded any further, so that would be your final answer. Let's look at the next one. So the next one we have log base 2 of 6 times x. Why don't you guys actually see if you can try this one on your own using the log, or those rules for the logarithms that we already talked about. This one, there's only just one thing we have to do with it. So go ahead and try it, pause the video if you need to, and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, let's see how you got, what you got with this one. So you did log base 2 of 6 plus log base 2 of x, and that can't be simplified any further, so that would be your answer. Now with this next one, the log of the cube root of x, y, I would recommend rewriting that using an exponential, um, or a fractional exponent, or a rational exponent there. Because now you can recognize that, oh, that one-third is an exponent, so that exponent can be parked in front of the logarithm. And now, that x times y, that can be broken up into two separate logarithms. Log of x plus the log of y. And it'd be one-third that whole quantity, because remember, that cube root applied to everything, not just the x. So if you had one-third log x plus the log of y without the parentheses, 
that would refer to the fact that would reference the one third only applying to the x and not the entire quantity. So it is important to have those parentheses. Well, here's what we're building to. Let's look at this larger equation here, where we're going to take that giant expanded out bunch of logarithms, and we can write that as a single logarithm. Now, for us to be able to do that, we're going to have to apply almost all of those rules we just talked about. So, for example, you might recognize that um, the 2 in front of that quantity, log 2x minus log y, that 2 is an exponent for that quantity. So we could write it like this, log of 2x minus the log of y quantity squared. Now you might notice that in the other set of parentheses, that 2 would apply to the 5 as an exponent. So we would have minus log of 3 plus 5 squared, or just log of 25. Okay, now in the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work inside these individual parentheses. In the first parentheses, we would have log of 2x minus the log of y. Well, that could be si simplified as a single logarithm to be the log of 2x divided by y, and it would be that quantity squared. And in the second uh, set of parentheses there, those could be combined as a single logarithm using multiplication. Now, if I simplify the square, because we want to square that, it's what's inside of parentheses, 2x squared and the y squared would become 4x squared over y squared. And in the other one, 3 times 25 is 75. So now I still have two logarithms here. I want to write this as a single logarithm. So that minus means I'm going to divide by 75. Now it gets kind of weird because we already have 4x squared over y squared, and then minus a log of 75. So dividing by 75 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 75. In other words, we would write this as an equation, or write this as an expression to be 4x squared over 75y squared. And that would be your answer as a single logarithm. I know that one's kind of tricky, uh, so that one's meant to kind of push ourselves a little bit. But you can see that even though it looks ugly, really along the way, it was just applying each of those rules that we've already talked about. Well, there you have it. That is our video on how to apply some of those rules of logarithms. So hopefully you'll see that as you practice these, they get a lot easier and you start to see how to use each of those rules. Remember they can both, they can all be used in both directions, meaning sometimes we're going to use those log, those rules to expand out those logarithms and sometimes we're going to use those rules to write something as a single logarithm. So you want to make sure that you do your assignment to make sure that you have an opportunity to practice those. So with that, good luck as you work on that assignment.